So I would uh, say that really, really, uh, we try to speak like this with each other to make sure that it all works. <clears throat> I'll try my best. I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right? Yes. Good. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. This thing that says RP15 is a conference. It's called Re colon Publica, Republica. And it's a kind of a digital society conference, I guess. There are plus minus 6,000 people here for three days. And there's something insane like 700 sessions, I think. And there's really everything from digital anarchist artists to Drupalists, basically. Um, tons of commercial firms, tons of brands that you know and that you've seen, IBM, Adobe, um, and tons of really bleeding edge, interesting stuff, technology, culture, etc. I was very um, grateful to be accepted as a speaker. And I talked about open source and Drupal and what we do. And I was thrilled to run into two of my Drupal friends here. So please introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do. My name is Anja Shevinsky, um, also known as Ashivi in the Drupal community. And um, I am co-founder and CEO of a German Drupal shop called Unpower. And Unpower, for anyone who went to DrupalCon Amsterdam or who looks up the video online, There's a great origin story about how the company name came about, and I will link to that in the notes for this show. Go. That's great. Uh, I'm Johannes Haseitl. Uh, my nick is Dahasi, and I'm also CEO and co-founder of Unpol, and doing Drupal for hobby and living, and that's totally great. So you're both CEOs? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Okay, I suppose that you make it work. <laughs> yeah, you need it to, you know. We're fine. quite a lot of people in the team, so you need two people to be the boss. So I know that you met at a Hanover Drupal user group meetup, is that right? That's correct. And out of a user group, it practically came that company. Yeah. What was that? What was that path like going from just hanging out with people who like to do the same sort of thing to deciding to, uh, you know, essentially spend your lives together? Um, that just kind of happened on accident. You know, um, Johannes one day um, for one of the user group meetups um, came up with a session and said, "We have to do stuff together. We um, work on these projects, and they're all kind of uh, chaotic because we worked on them as freelancers and." someone else was always um, managing the projects and we had no say in how the projects were going and all we saw was they mostly were really chaotic pro projects um, and we wanted to really change that and have more say in, in how everything goes and so he said let's do something together but more like a, a network of freelancers and let's give it a name and um, you know get um, At the time, the, the user group was great. The great people, and um, we really had a lot of fun in the user group. And I personally liked everyone in the user group. I guess the rest of uh, the user group felt the same. And therefore, we got the right people at the right time, at the right place, um, to, to get this Drupal spirit in a later, really, uh, a Drupal company and agency, although we thought we do didn't want to do that. At first we said it should be a freelancer network and no we're trying... Agency. We no agency, we specifically yes. wrote that down. In bold. Yeah. <laughs> and, but then it turned out that um, if you have the right people, it's, it doesn't matter if you are a freelancer, a, agent, a freelancer network or a company. Um, 
it simply works. And especially in Germany, it's easier to be a, a formal company. I think it's easier to convince clients to work yeah. with you if you have some sort of recognizable structure there too. Yeah. But the foundation was really the people. And without uh, the people, I hadn't had the idea of um, putting um, us together or rec um, recommending that. So it turned out to be pretty well. So that's cool. That's like Drupal community turns into business, right? That's a that's a nice story. So so, what would you say? What would you say your favorite thing about Drupal is? Um, what for me personally um, is I, I don't I don't know PHP. I know HTML. I know CSS, um, but I don't know PHP. But I um, was able. It, it allowed me to um, build very different um, kinds of. Uh, internet platforms without knowing how to really code. You know, I, uh, at the company uh, I worked at before Umpower, um we had four Drupal websites, and uh, one was like an author website, one was the company website, one was a uh, um, women's network community, and one was like a, a portal for uh, training classes, so you could have all these materials up and different classes and members and, you know, attachments and things like that. And I was able to do that pretty much by myself with the help of um, some community members and the, and the meetup, the, the user group we had, um, and my little knowledge of HTML and CSS. That's really empowering. It, it goes to show that the idea of making a system to let people communicate on the web um, who aren't technical actually works. And here you are running a Drupal company now, right? Yeah. And that too. Yeah. Now, your first version of Drupal was... 4.7, I guess. Okay. So, so you've been around for quite a while. What, what's, yeah. Why are you still doing Drupal? Um, the community spirit, really, um, because that's something that's in my heart, I guess. I, I like to share. I like to um, see people help each other. And I guess Drupal is very, the Drupal community is very strong about that. So. It's, um, it's really open source and an open community, and I love that. That's um, amazing, and I want to live in a, uh, in a world where people share with each other. I want to be a part of a community that does that, and I want to be a part of a company in my, uh, in my work time and in my spare time to um, work that way and to live that way, and that's totally amazing for me and for that reason I never had any reason to look in in any other CMS or something like that because on the other, other hand uh, Drupal gives so much opportunities because of the broad module and the variety of things you can do with that that it's a whole ecosystem that pumps all my needs so it's great to, for me, I think it's really inspiring to go to a conference where there are sessions about things way past Drupal, but what are two Drupal shop owners doing at the Republica conference? We've heard about this event for the last couple of years and um, we were never able to go because the tickets were always sold out so quickly. And um, this time, I think it was last year when they opened up um, ticket sales, I was like, oh, we have to buy them right now. Uh, and I just asked him, do you want to go too? So I got two tickets for him and myself. And we just wanted to check it out and um, find out what this thing is all about. Um, sure, and it's also, um, I mean, apart from maybe looking for speakers to come and talk with Drupalists or, um, you know, looking for new business partners or new opportunities or just, there are so many ideas that maybe haven't made it into the Drupal community yet that, that we could use, whether it's doing more business, whether it's just getting more inspired, whether it's learning uh, you know, a new design method. I mean, there's so much going on here, right? So of the, I'm not sure actually if it's 500 or 700 sessions, how many hundred have you gone, how many hundreds of sessions have you seen so far? Um, not that many. I think it was uh, 600 speakers here. Okay. That's what I read in the, in the Uban. Right. Um, 
but I, I'm not actually sure. There's so many. There's like 16 um, parallel sessions, and I've spent all my time reading the, the schedule. Instead of going to a session. Like, um, exactly. <laughs> I think I saw like around 10, and some were really cool. And the, I, was it the first day or the second day that the Netflix CEO was here? And he spoke and about like, the history of Netflix and how it evolved. That was really cool. And yesterday, they, um, the astronaut, Alex Gerst, I think that was his name, is uh, was here. And then after him, there was an astrophysicist um, who was... That was so interesting to learn all these things about the universe. I know what you're an astrophysicist now, so... Yeah, one of you. Oh, yeah, we have to okay. restructure oh, Well, thank you, for coming, thank you for coming to my session. Yeah. You know, I had this really, <laughs> really tough competition. The um, there were um, two, at least two, DrupalCon former keynote speakers uh, that I ran into yesterday. Uh, Aurel Balkin is here and Cory Doctorow is here. Um, last year, however, uh, the company F-Secure... F, yeah. F secure, secure. right? Um, Almost with the yellow container. With the yellow container oh. this year. Um, so this year they're doing a, an, a, a sort of art installment about, um, uh, well, online spying essentially. Um, there's a, a, a container that's set up like a bedroom and there are people hanging out and you, in it and you can watch them. Um, but the, the owner of F secure last year did a, a session and co-presented it with David Hasselhoff. Which was hilarious. Um, so pretty much anything can happen at this. Um, what have you learned? What's the coolest thing that you've learned here so far? It's a hard question because uh, I thought about that yesterday and those are so many different aspects and uh, it's very politically... There are a lot of um, sessions that deal with with real life problems, so it's uh, politics problems, and uh, I got a lot of feelings about that. So, so my belly, and um, it's hard to explain. It's uh, something you are upset about the, the current state, and you want to uh, want some kind of change, something, or be part of a change. Uh, but I'm not sure how to do that and what is the reason why the state is like that. Something like the refugee situation. Um, there was a talk about uh, with uh, a panel discussion with uh, Claudia Roth and a refugee from, from Kenya and I guess some scientists doing um, research in uh, using technologies in the refugee sector or how it's uh, working there and there's so much we can do and especially for, for integrating people to, to be taller brands, to tolerate people, to integrate them in our lives, to uh, speak with them, to simply deal with them and don't put them in the corner and mm. say okay you are here in Germany, you get money from our, um, from our state be fine with that. No, they want to be included, they want to give us something and that's something I really feel strong about right now and that's something that came up here. So, um, one, thing, one, one thing for me somehow is that um, we can really use technology to make the world yeah. a better place and an event like this really reminds me that we can and should, that we have a responsibility to use our technology to help solve real problems in the real world and that there's that there are people out there other technologists using um, every you know software hardware making stuff to really address much much bigger problems than you know uh, getting Drupal 8 out the door uh, and I, I find that really inspiring and a little bit humbling too we have the opportunity to do that because we are in an open source community we work with thought that is something you can share with everybody everybody can work with it everybody can learn it and that's something that on the one hand can help us for helping other people or helping ourselves in, in terms of forming a company or something like that but that also can help other people because they can learn it they can use it for their needs and they can build their life with that and um, 
we talked yesterday about that topic a little. So um, I like how this mindset forms from something that makes sense. This whole open source community, open source mindset, sharing with people, helping people, um, getting problems away together. It's the same in technical discussions in, in Drupal 8 course, for example. There's always something good coming out when people gather together, talk open about issues and about problems that are there and find in an open way a solution for the common sense. This is live action at the conference and there are, you know, at any given time, people filming us behind those cameras, hundreds of people walking past, so um, yeah, this is the only spot we could find. Um, talk in your loudest voice about being in business in an open source context. Talk about being an open source business person. It's an interesting question because I don't know how to do a non-open source business. Um, we just kind of grew into this. We had no idea about um, business at all or running or, you know, like a, a Drupal shop or anything really. Um, but it works out for us really well and I think we're in, based in Germany so my um, my opinion is that I um, that German clients are already familiar with open source. There's this um, system um, called Typo3, which is also a content management system, and it's open source and it's very widespread and known and popular in Germany. So we don't have to have the discussion um, why open source. Just why Drupal? Just why Drupal? Why, if we can do it with Typo 3, why should we do it with Drupal? Because it's so much better. Oh, because it's so much better. <laughs> it's what we tell them. In a lot of countries, what you've done going from being Drupal friends to being a Drupal company is a very, very common pattern. And we see it all over the place with, with um, you know, in the Drupal sphere, very, very well-known companies like Palantir, like Chapter 3, um, but I mean literally hundreds of others. Um, and it hardly ever happens in Germany. Uh, 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 comparing the level of German-speaking contributors, so people from Switzerland, Austria, Germany roughly, who contribute to Drupal and the grassroots amount of Drupal in Germany, to the amount of business here. There's so much less than I would have expected. Why is that? I'm, I'm guessing that it's, um, it might be a little hard and bureaucratic in Germany to um, uh, become a freelancer, then you have to do all the, like, the insurance stuff yourself. And I think people enjoy um, being employed for a company a little more because it's easier, you only have your eight-hour day, um, it's relaxed, you're, you have all your insurances, um, and people, I think Germans are scared to risk something, and everyone's always like, you're so brave for doing this, and I, I don't know, I think for us it was like the easiest thing we could do, um, but I think lots of people are scared to do it, um, and even just to start to become a freelancer, and then, um, you know, founding your own company is even more risky because I mean, that costs a lot of money um, to be like a professional company. So that's just my guess. All right. So I would like to see more German Drupal shops. What's yeah. your advice to all the people who haven't yet started one um, but have the knowledge and experience that you have? What would you tell them? Simply do it. So. And it's great about software. You you don't only need a computer and an internet connection and you can work. You can, you can earn money, you can uh, talk with clients, you can be everywhere and work for everyone everywhere in the world. So um, if you are passionate about that, um, simply do it. Have you been following the Drupal 8 release cycle? Of course. What are you most excited about as a Drupal agency? What are you most excited about in Drupal 8? We are, I think, most excited about the configuration management part. We wrote a book about it, and it's published. 
it's, it was published <laughs> like a, a few weeks ago. I will um, link to that. Yeah, you should. Um, it's a packed publishing book. Fantastic. It's the first Drupal 8 book available, I think. And uh, so we've been reading up on it. Anja wrote it with Thank Stefan. You. I was only a little reviewer. You proofread stuff. <laughs> um, so we've been uh, testing that stuff out for over a year. We started writing the book like um, in January of 2014. So you're also ready to hit the ground running on your deployment strategy, right? When Drupal 8 comes Absolutely. out? Absolutely. Yeah, we're, Maybe not anything else, but deployment, yeah, you're good. We know deployment. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited about that because we've been um, working with like the features module and you know, um, version controlling code for a really long time, and we really like that. And um, so we're excited about that because it looks really simple. Uh, I never got, I never, I never uh, got to using features. Um, I mean, apart from the timing, because by the time features was being used, I was, I kind of moved on to other things. But uh, I used the classic deployment method as described by many others in the past of put it up on the production server and take the notes that you wrote last exactly. night on a napkin and click them back in yeah. and then you're good to go. I don't see why yeah. we need anything. It's a method I describe in the book. Oh, but really? I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Then I, then I will have to, have to also figure out CMI. Um, it's a great idea though. And essentially, for anyone who hasn't heard of it, uh, up through Drupal 7, configuration information and content were stored in the database next to each other and to slice and dice the database to get them apart was hard and there have been dozens of different workarounds and um, it's made things like content staging really hard which is essential in today's web I think for large serious systems and so Drupal 8 has uh, the only content in the database and all the configuration has been moved to text files, YAML files. And the cool thing about that, not only can you do content staging, but you can do copy configuration from uh, development to production instances and version control yep. so that you can roll back, roll forward uh, all of your all of your configuration. It's like fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, so before we go, give us your shameless plug. We are on power. And uh, we wrote the book on Drupal 8 configuration management. We are based in Hanover. And uh, yeah, come visit us or get in touch. And I guess that's undpowell.de? Undpowell.de or .com. Or .com. Cool. All right. Very good. Hey, thank you. It's so great to run into thank you. you. Thanks for taking the time Thanks, out Jim. of several hundred sessions to, yeah. to, to hang out in front of the camera, too. Anytime. That is so cool about the book. I totally yeah, I didn't know. I forgot to tell you before. It's, um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a wild ride. It was published in, in March, right before I was going off to vacation. Uh huh. Um, and then we, we're still waiting for the paperbacks to arrive at our office. And um, well, yeah.